We're up to speed. We're up to speed. Are we on? We're on. There's a very romantic blizzard <laughs> in New York today. It's, uh, it reminds me of something out of a Nor Ephron film. <laughs> and who am I with? Dan. Good old Dan. Dan, your thoughts? Things could be worse. You oh, could yeah? be with uh, Mario Basco or Mike Boschetti. Actually, I like that better. <laughs> oh, God, thanks. I, no, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm sec- they're secure in their sexuality. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. He always takes it so seriously. But the jealousy with Dan is becoming an issue. I, I told Dan everything about him. He's irreplaceable. He's irre- he's like Obamacare. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, my, my nickname for Dan is Obamacare. It's you going could, away in two weeks. Well, you could refute him or you could you could take him away, but you can't replace him. <laughs> you can't replace him. He's, he's not replaceable. Where else are you going to get a guy who's a great producer, knows everything technically, Except for the updates at DirecTV. <laughs> uh, and uh, there's also a, an on-air uh, counterpart that is perfect for a slob like me. <laughs> Thank you. And gets the sweats around Rick Steves. <laughs> that is like, you know, again, I don't know if I, I hope people don't think we made that up for a bit. It's it's the single, I've said this to Dan, it's the single most interesting fact about another human being I've ever known. About a guy I know, you know, like if I knew, uh, like Jeff Goldblum's character, The Fly, if if he was real and I knew him, that would trump Dan. <laughs> if, 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 if I knew a guy who was also a fly. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew a guy who was slowly turning into a fly, and that was his secret, <laughs> and that was the reason he threw up on food before he ate it. <laughs> That was the reason he threw up on food before he ate it. <laughs> People I grew up with had another reason. <laughs> they were Irish. <laughs> okay. Kidding, of course. Let me just say this. Many of my friends are Irish Americans. No. <laughs> no, but so so the the fact that Dan, a heterosexual man, I mean we're gonna go with that. Uh I think he is. I would know by now for sure. I would know by now for sure. Uh what what person who uh, is attracted to men sexually doesn't come on to me in two years? <laughs> Again, he, he does seem to time when I come out naked to get in a washcloth. He, he puts the washcloth where I have to come out. Oh, he's luring me out. <laughs> it's gay bait. It, it's it's gay bear bait, <laughs> and I'm a big grizzly, <laughs> and I come out of hibernation. Because I figure twenty in the bathroom is enough. I didn't think you'd go over the twenty limit. Well, listen, when I have somebody as efficient as you with towel, uh, there's been no woman in my life ever who's done towels like you. No one. Sometimes I weep. I'm so happy. Do you know I've taken a towel and I've, I've, watched, one, I've watched one elbow and I just throw it down? Because the water, but here, here's where, again, I need socks. And I don't like my feet touching the damp water. So I throw a new towel down there in disgust. But I've been staying in a lot of hotels lately. I banged abroad uh, last month, uh, the last week. I met in a comedy club. We'll just say she's a fan. <laughs> uh, whatever. She's not dad fan. <laughs> Who's dad fan? No, and, uh, you know, so I've been stealing hotel towels because... Uh, Dan, he, I guess I have more than one complaint. Now, Dan is the best guy ever, but when, I, when, when he decides to buy something for our home, <laughs> and this is our home, uh, he, 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 he goes cheap with it. I think he wants to impress me. <laughs> uh, you know, look, Adi, I saved you some money. Towels is not the area to come back. <laughs> not with us. Towels, I love towels. Ugh. I love a lot of towels. I a never lot thought of you would notice the difference. Listen, it had almost the same label. For a while, I was staying at the Four Seasons in New York so often. That was one of the days. I was making a lot of moolah. A lot of, a lot of as Rush Limbaugh used to say, cabin. <laughs> uh, and uh, there was one uh, foreign maid, probably Mexican. Uh, very sweet, though. Very sweet. Uh, she knew me. And she was, she, she, one day I'd stay there maybe four or five times and I saw her. This is very affectionate. I gave her a hug after this. She said, Ah, oh, the towel man. <laughs> 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 I bring a towel now. <laughs> yes, bring me towel now. 
<laughs> oh, I loved her. I said, you with towel? Not, yes. Yes. Oh, you wipe ass with towel. <laughs> you wipe her ass with towel. <laughs> oh, you skid mark man. Oh, God. We call you down in London a skid mark man. But you bigger tipper man. We love the tip. We love the tip of the shit. <laughs> What's the tip on the towel man? What do you mean? How much did you tip her? Oh, God. I gave her C-note every time. Oh, my God. C-note every time. Oh, God. That's a hundy. Forget it. I could have said to her, listen, come here, Consuelos. <laughs> Did name Maria? Well, now it's Consuelos. Of course. You call me Consuelos. <laughs> you call me anything you want. I'm going to call you my little WB. <laughs> What's that? Wonderful, wonderful boy lover? <laughs> no, wet pad. No. Oh, God. I'm kidding. You kid anytime you want. You say racist things. I don't care. <laughs> For a buck 20, you say racist things. <laughs> She's arguing with me, bargaining. No, uh, I, I, yeah, I, anything. I could have said to Wilson as well. Uh, I, uh, I, I killed a whore <laughs> by mistake. Um, listen, uh, have you ever seen uh, Very Bad Things, the movie? <laughs> you know, Jerry Piven's character? No, I don't see. <laughs> and I see everything Jerry Piven do. <laughs> That's the one thing I don't see. Uh, yeah. Well, a lot of the critics put Very Bad Movie. It was, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he impaled a whore on a, uh, a, a coat rack like a, a, co a, a thing sticking out and he impaled her while he was having uh, sexual intercourse. Oh, they're very bad. Yeah, I know. Just to shut up. <laughs> Listen, I basically did that last night and she's an older, she's an older whore and, uh, you know, I got to get rid of the body. Oh, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, see, many, a lot of congressmen live here. We do this for them. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We do it all the time. <laughs> Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump, <laughs> Mr. Clinton, Mr. Clinton, a lot of Mr. Clinton. <laughs> oh yeah, we get we have the hormobile, <laughs> the dead hormobile. Yeah, so she's impaled. Let me just show it to you. She's impaled. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's a bad one. Yeah, she's impaled on that coat rack there. I was having sexual sexual intercourse with her. And I, for a second, even though I didn't realize it, I became necrophiliac. <laughs> I think I ejaculated after she died. Oh, that are no good. <laughs> she can't get pregnant, though. <laughs> a dead woman cannot carry a baby. <laughs> I know this from my village. <laughs> <laughs> Your village? Yeah, my village. All right, so you get rid of her? Oh, see, no problem. I get it. <laughs> and that's it. For 100 bucks, that's what they'll do. <laughs> These are not nice people. <laughs> I'm kidding. She's wonderful. I would have married her. Uh, she would have to take off 20. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, she could go see that doctor in Houston. Oh, yeah. See, Dr. Nawalson. <laughs> but really, I, she's the, my 220 pound wife, you know. <laughs> it would be me being obnoxious. I understand you're going to marry Ari. <laughs> I see. Uh, there was a kid when I, I waited uh, with my sister lasted two weeks. That's when my nose bled uh, while I was taking an order from a yuppie couple because I got stop signed by a couple of cops the night before. <laughs> you know what stop sign is? Uh, you explain it to me. They grab you by your ears. Yeah, yeah. Well, with you, it's a, you blow them. But with me, it's a... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, they, they just hit, break your nose. Bam, right into the knee. And that's what happened. Dan McGrath, the uh, good cop. <laughs> He uh, stopped me from getting my ass kicked because a cop did it. I was in a blackout drunk at the Rusty Scupper in West Orange. <laughs> rusty Scupper. We had a Rusty Scupper in Chicago. Really? Yep. Oh, well, I guess right it's by O'Hare. I guess it's a chain. It was a mafia hangout. Right. Okay, let's just calm down. <laughs> there, there was no such thing as a mafia in the Rusty Scupper. <laughs> let's put it this way. I didn't fight back. <laughs> so McGrath takes me uh, to the fucking emergency room. And... Uh, he, uh, he, he he's uh, hitting on a chick. He doesn't want to leave. He goes, uh, Lang, you can't go to the fucking emergency room. And you're, I'm like, damn, my nose is splattered all over my face. <laughs> so he drives me with his badge. We're doing 98 miles an hour on local streets. Like, we get pulled over 15 times. Yeah. I'm like, I'm late for a pay job. <laughs> I'll flash tin. And that's it. We just go, you go. So uh, he stays with me for a little while. I have no insurance. Six hundred dollars. They fix my nose. The next day, my sister got me the job. This is nineteen ninety two. Santa Fe Yacht Club. It's a different bar now, and he over by the path train. I am taking a yuppie's order, <laughs> and my nose bleeds while she's looking at me, oh. and I'm saying the specials. The woman screams, "Oh my god!" <laughs> 
And a uh, big fat guy who owned the joint, a little intimidating. <laughs> Kept slapping. Uh, he had a great story. Uh, his uh, his wife uh, uh, was annoying to him, and she he got back after working 19 hours. And uh, his wife told him to go get bread, and he went to Sicily <laughs> for six months. A judge made him come back in the court. He said, well, he's, judge said, where'd you go? He goes, I want to get the bread. <laughs> that kind of guy. He... Uh, he almost impaled me like that whore. He put me up against the wall. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, blow? Uh, no. No, I'm not doing blow. Well, yeah, I was doing blow, but I got my ass kicked. I got stop signed. <laughs> and he almost stop signed me again. <laughs> and uh, he threw me out. I got fired. Uh-huh. I never took an order, Dan. In the middle of my first order. <laughs> I, I, I didn't take a... Th- that's how long the job lasted. <laughs> I didn't take an order. My sister was livid. <laughs> Live it. I vouch for you. you know, I said I went out the night before the rusty scupper. <laughs> it was the worst thing to say. But there was a little fat round Mexican guy who was a, who, later on. How about this story? About two years later, won the lottery. This guy. He's living large. Uh, and uh, he loved my sister. Loved my sister. He goes, hi. I go, he goes, who are you? I go, I'm Stacy's brother. He goes, oh, see, <laughs> I love Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little round, uh, Lou Costello looking Mexican. <laughs> like Lou, uh, Lou Costello. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, I could do anything I want. I could do anything I want in these, in these uh, hotels, I, that Four Seasons especially. And uh, I could go up to her and say, listen, uh, I came on the lamp. Oh, oh! I came on the lamp, and there was some blood in my cum. Oh. Okay, we take a care. <laughs> we take a care, and that's it. So uh, I don't know what the point of my story was. I forget. But that's what's great about this podcast. <laughs> How much did you tip the maid in Montreal? Uh, I fucked her. <laughs> <laughs> Can we? That, 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 that's her tip, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> I tell the maids now, you can have a hundred. There's another option to the hundred. <laughs> what is it? Uh, three seconds of sheer bliss. <laughs> uh, uh, no, possibly a broken rib. <laughs> I think about that maid sometimes. I, I, I'm not David Beckham. I'm Artie Lang. <laughs> I fucked my maid. <laughs> I should look. I should have called a realtor in Montreal immediately. <laughs> uh, I, that, but again, I think about it. That's how sad I looked. I looked so sad and pathetic. A woman fucked me. <laughs> a young woman. And, and I, I said this before. Montreal has not heard about the all shaving thing yet. <laughs> but that's all right. I went back to the eighties, <laughs> where I never got laid. Nothing wrong with that. Oh yeah. I you know, I, but the only chicks I fucked in the eighties were in their eighties. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, listen, listen. Yeah, I, I, I must. She goes, "Oh, what's wrong?" <laughs> but she, and she was French. La what's la wrong? <laughs> I said, "I don't know." I, I said, "I'm fine." No, you're not fine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm fine. And she made that. Mm, I'd say. Mm. I'm okay. And I'm going, you know what? You're annoying me now. I was listening to Ripple by the Grateful Dead. She sits down next to me. And I'm like, what? Now I know what a good looking girl feels like when they're violated. <laughs> she, she was about she was 24 years old. That's what she said. <laughs> but she looked young, big, thick, big, big brown eyes. Oh, big brown eyes. Her eyes look like. Uh, I don't know. There was an African American running back named Newhouse <laughs> for the uh, for the Cowboys in the late seventies. That's what her eyes look like. Ed Newhouse, stocky guy, Dave Meggett. <laughs> so so I you know and just just and, and she just uh, she she lift, I lifted up the fucking old dress there, the maid dress <laughs> that did not look clean. Oh, and I gave it to her. It was so hot. I fucked her. We, we, she I, she still had her rag in her hand. <laughs> I said, you're on the rag. Oh, God. Best joke I ever made with a whore. Well, she wasn't a whore. She's a maid. <laughs> and she didn't even understand what I was saying. <laughs> you tell a joke? Shut up. <laughs> Four seconds. And then I laid there, and I started to cry. 
and she gently kissed me on my forehead, got up, cleaned the room, and left. <laughs> <laughs> Your dream boat has docked. <laughs> got up, cleaned the room, and left. What did you do? I got up and took a shit. <laughs> <laughs> So in other words, a perfect afternoon. <laughs> uh, nothing. I, I, nothing. I, I didn't even. It, well, listen. I, 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 she said, you're not going to tell us something. I said, no. I don't tell anybody except every man I see within five feet of me for the next <laughs> four days. I could not get the story out of my mouth soon enough. <laughs> and uh, Solange. <laughs> Solange was her name. And it's spelled so lang. <laughs> She'd be so lang, so so lang lang. <laughs> I, I just realized that she would have been so lang lang. <laughs> so lang, so lang, so lang. He's so fine. He's so Jesus, how queer that was. Uh, you know all the Shirelles. <laughs> I mean, no, and then she, the next day, crying, she found out how important I was. <laughs> no, she was, she was afraid I was going to tell people in the festival. I was like, no, are you kidding me? I haven't told anybody. <laughs> Best joke ever. Best joke ever for the weekend for that situation of me fucking my maid. We, I told Dave Chappelle. Uh, I, I told Neil Brennan, who was Chappelle's partner. You know, they're, they're really good friends. I, and they, and uh, Chappelle, we were backstage at one of the venues that we were all doing stand-up at. And uh, he, 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 Neil says, you got to tell Dave. I go, I'm going to tell him. Like, he might be the only, only guy here with a story, quite frankly. <laughs> and uh, I told Chappelle, and he goes, damn. <laughs> He go, man, I ain't even got, I ain't even got into that shit. <laughs> <laughs> he go, that is, <laughs> you go, man, that's some fucking, that's some goddamn, that, that, that's like some Clint Eastwood shit. That's like some Billy Ray, <laughs> Billy D. Williams shit. <laughs> that's some, you into some Dolomite shit. <laughs> <laughs> On the line, that's the guy I know with that story. <laughs> the guy I know with that story is On the line. <laughs> I ain't repeating that shit. <laughs> What the fuck? Uh, and uh, yeah, one other guy has that story. I told it. You know, we, uh, Neil Brennan. Uh, Neil, Br no, did Neil know this? One other guy know it. Who, one of the guys who, one of the four thousand guys I told knew somebody. I <laughs> know uh, uh, the, the director of uh, the Hangover and Old School. Who I'm in Old School. That's how I know him. Todd Phillips uh, has has the only other person that w w me, Chappelle, Neil, and the other people in the room could think of with that story. And I said, and Todd is, the, I think he's happily married now, but uh, I haven't seen him in a while. But Todd is known for that. Todd is a real late, but before, I can't say who it was, but uh, I'm sure he'd be okay with it, but I won't, uh, you know, do it without asking him. It, when he was just like a production assistant, he went to NYU. Uh, same year as Frank Sebastiano and stuff, so Frank knows him. And uh, Todd was very nice to me. He's a big Stern fan. He liked me on the show. He put me in old school. You know, Fuck. You know, with Will, who I had uh, worked with before, and that, that was, uh, did me a solid there. Residual-wise, everything. And, uh, yeah, so I, I like Todd a lot. But, yeah, you know, when, uh, he's, he's a real ladies' man. He fucked a very famous hot chick when he was not a director yet. A college student. Just talked her into bed. He, he's, some chick, he's like that with broads. Don't leave your people around him. So uh, he fucked and made it, I believe, with the Four Seasons in L.A. And hey, that, 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 listen, that's high quality shit. <laughs> but so lang, so lang. I don't know. She was cute. She was cute. Damn, motherfucker. Yes, she was. Fuck the maid. Did you see so lang, so lang? Yes, I, I went on a search with Paul Morrissey because you remember you he saw so lang. Yes, she has switched floors though because I think she was afraid of what. I hope she wouldn't. <laughs> you know what? I'm just. I, I, I listen. Don't go looking sad in front of her. <laughs> I know what you're trying to do. She thought well, I was, I was with Paul Morrissey. I had to look sad. I think. She, <laughs> I think, Dan. She thought I saved. She saved life. She thought she saved. I was going to leap out the window. And I'm not going to. I went to a lot of strip clubs and tried to look depressed. I couldn't get it back. After that. <laughs> that was astonishing. You know what I'm thinking about? That's the most astonishing thing that's ever happened to me. I, I'm saying. You know what? I, the, the, yes, that happened. <laughs> what? Now everything's happened. <laughs> Six months later, I snorted a, a glass. <laughs> what a life. What a disgusting life. What a, you know what? I, I, St. Peter's, if I'm, my life is on tape. He's going, you're disgusting. <laughs> Your life has been disgusting. Disgusting. 
<laughs> but I was sad. What am I? I'm supposed to not fuck her? <laughs> she sat down and she started nibbling at my neck, like, like what is going on here? Uh. I thought cops were going to burst in. <laughs> I was being set up because I got to tell you what. The last time I'd been to Montreal, 17 years ago, right after we wrapped, that means finish movie. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you. Right after we got done with Dirty Work, I was in Toronto. I went to Montreal, and uh, Norm, I th- Norm was doing stand-up, and I, I did a set somewhere at, at, uh, at, at a club up there in, in Montreal, and I walked around the town, and I partied a bit, and uh, I just blew off a lot of steam, and I had to go right to L.A., uh, but I got a Coke dealer there that I owed a lot of money to, and I left. I left owing. I paid him back something. I, uh, I left owing a cocaine dealer in Montreal money. Uh, so believe me. I was when she started coming on me. I'm like, okay, this is his daughter. <laughs> oh God! But she's a little too light skinned, if you know what I mean. <laughs> to be Mrs. Perez. <laughs> uh, oh, El Duque. <laughs> so yeah, she starts nibbling, just you know, and the ripples playing. Every time I hear ripple. <laughs> Every time I hear ripple. And uh, talk about risk, dumb risks in life. That 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 blow dealer. I you know it wasn't a time. I mean, like eight hundred bucks, eight hundred twelve dollars, <laughs> because I bought him a diner. It's a long story. <laughs> but I, you know what am I? I'm a, you know it's, I'm announcing I'm there. He knew who I was. Um, oh, I thought this is it. <laughs> He's gonna burst in with Cat Williams. <laughs> Ain't no nigga in the history of nigga. I'm gonna let you ride for eight hundred dollars. Uh yeah. And then she nibbled and nibbled, and I started going like this. I put my, I said, well, what the fuck? This is bait I'm going to, baby. (laughs) And we started making out a little bit, and I was like, fuck this making out shit. I never saw her tits. (laughs) Never saw her tits. She saw mine. (laughs) Oh, God. She saw mine. Gently kissed me as I was crying. And uh, cleaned the room. (laughs) What if you asked a regular woman to clean the room? <laughs> they get all offended. Not so large. She wanted a good report from Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Marcy's great, the greatest joke ever, though. The greatest joke ever. It was me, him, and Tom Papa, who I told, of course. Neil Brennan, who I told, of course. And uh, you know the joke, right? I, I can't remember it now. I'm checking out. He goes. He goes. Uh, he goes later. He goes. All right, a couple of days when you're checking out of the hotel, there's going to be a mysterious four hundred dollar charge. What? Uh, you fucked the maid, right? <laughs> 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 what? What is this four hundred dollar charge? Oh, you fucked the maid, right? <laughs> <laughs> you fucked the maid. <laughs> oh, Salon just four hundred. What are these other broads? <laughs> Oh man, that's a, that was Paul. That was high five time for Paul, yeah. baby. Now they get the water, nigga. <laughs> Paul's always good, but uh, yeah. So you know, again, uh, it's, I don't know what I'm talking about. What a couch that uh, for 24 hours for that couch. You had sex with the maiden, and 24 hours later, Orny Adams is sitting on the couch yeah. talking about the comedian right, bus. Right, right, Jimmy Carr. <laughs> the Jimmy Carr noticed the nosebleed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I fell off the wagon, and my nose was bleeding. Right before I snorted the glass. <laughs> and Jimmy Carr pretended, your nose is bleeding. <laughs> That's the guy who's got five million Twitter followers yeah. in London. And told us the Burt Reynolds gay book. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then Orny Adams uh, told us about the... Uh, what? I, I, listen, I was in a group. <laughs> you were in a group? I don't know. I mean, are you being serious? I, I'm on the podcast. Do you want me here? I don't know. I mean, Dan Natterman's here. <laughs> Should I stay? You asked me a serious question. <laughs> what? <laughs> what, what, what? Well, I'm just saying. There were groups. I was never in a group. I was unique. <laughs> I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I'm saying I was original. <laughs> you were in the, you know, Artie, you were like, Joe was in the neurotic group. <laughs> you were in the, uh, Dan was in the, you know, ugly Jew group. <laughs> Artie, you were in the, 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 the guinea junkie. <laughs> Is it, wasn't there a guinea junkie group? Geraldo was Geraldo. I don't know. Was he Hispanic? I'm not trying to get people mad at me. People tend to get mad. Why are you getting mad? At? I'm not being passive aggressive. I'm just saying I was in the real funny original group. You know, I, Dan, are you a comic? What group are you in? You're not a comedian, so it, it doesn't make any sense there. He's in the producer group. 
I'm saying there's a group of people that, you know, look, and when I do become, look, when I, if I'm worth $100 million, I'll give back. <laughs> what I'm saying is I'll give back. What are you going to get back? Well, I don't know. I'm trying off the top of my head. You know what? I'm, here's the thing. When you're an open micer, like we've all been, you always need a ride. Do you remember needing a ride? I mean, am I getting through? Is any, are you, I mean, am I, I, am I being offensive? I don't understand. I'm in your room. I, you said be here at noon. I went 10 minutes. What is 10 minutes? The fire alarm is going off. I mean, should we go? I don't know. Art, you don't look good. I mean, I'm just saying you don't look good. Should I should should I call the should I call the head of the festival? Are you going to make the show? I, I mean, listen, I ha I'm doing a gala tonight. I mean, what's the big deal? I killed at the gala. I mean, it's a, it's a buzz around the festival. But am I saying it? No, you should be saying it. What I'm saying is, here's how I'd give back. Open micers always need a, a, a they need a, Dan. Are you okay, Natterman? Natterman looks a little aggro. I mean, listen, can I help? I'm uh, better looking. Can I help? I fill out a shirt. I just have it together. I, I'm I, I'm always shaved. My laundry is. Oh, I just have it. Some of us do. Orny Adams has. Uh, do you mind if I speak about myself in the third person? Orny Adams does. Uh, you know. I do that bit where I say I'm an HOA from being horny. <laughs> you, you ever see that? You ever see me do that? It, it was voted most original <laughs> at the Santa Monica Festival. <laughs> do, do, I mean, is it a big deal? I, has, I have sex with 10 goth chicks a week. <laughs> I was on a show. I happen to be very good on a show that people enjoyed. I didn't know. I, I, did people say it was an original take on a character <laughs> that is in every sort of sci-fi type vampire show. I mean, you know. So the chicks kind of like that. I'm not apologizing, but what I would do is I would I would uh, if I had a hundred million dollars, I would be known for this. I would say I'm going to pay for a bus <laughs> to pick up open micers. There'd be a number or an email you'd call, you'd call or email and you'd say, "Listen, I'm an open micer and say like Cincinnati, and I Orny Adams. Can I get the Orny Adams bus to my open mic?" And uh, you know, look. I think that's a big service. That's giving back to comedy. Some people don't. I assume Marty, you're saying you're not, but I don't know. I, I, you know, I, you're somewhat successful. You have four more Twitter followers than me. Not that I'm counting. I'm not counting the Twitter followers. So I like an egg white omelet with a little oil. I mean, does that make me better than you? The waitress thought so, but do I think so? No, of course not. Other people think I'm better than you. I don't. <laughs> So I would, yeah, that would be, that's how I'd give back. If you're an open micer and you need a ride, you call the Orny Adams a bus, <laughs> which I would pay for out of a hundred million. And would, why are you laughing? People are laughing. Do not, is that not nice? Do you think I'm not going to come through on that uh, promise? <laughs> I'm telling you if I, uh, yeah, four Twitter followers is nothing art. <laughs> I mean, you were on the biggest radio show of all time for a decade. You would, I would assume you'd have more than me. <laughs> Yet I have more. Uh, you know, are you combining the Facebook page? <laughs> you know, I think each people, after the club, and we'd all kill, well, I would kill. I don't know if everyone killed, but I did. It's, it's, am, I, am I an asshole for stating a fact? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the Time Out New York also stated that fact. <laughs> The festival was reviewed. <laughs> Should I read it? <laughs> I have it here. I mean, does, does, does anybody, do, do you listen? I may be booked on Seth Meyers. <laughs> Am I bragging? <laughs> I, has anyone else here got any heat from Seth Meyers? <laughs> Based on your set alone here at the Nasty Show? <laughs> no. Okay, so when I'm on Seth Meyers in a month, am I going to get pushes from you? Like bad looks from you? I feel I'm in the group. <laughs> A lot of artists don't fit in a square, it's a square peg in a round hole thing. <laughs> the only time I fit in a hole is with goth chicks. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm always unique. So, I mean, I don't think you're going to be open micers again, but if you ever go backwards in your career and you're an open micer, a bus will take you to the open mic and I will pay for the bus. <laughs> And it will be a regular service that I do. And why is everyone not annoyed at my kindness? Uh, the paper mentioned it. The Montreal Gazette. Is that the name of it? 
Uh, are you upset I made you buy the egg white omelet with little oil? I mean, I thought I'd make you feel good that you can buy the breakfast. <laughs> All right. Art, you look like you're in, are you in withdrawals now? <laughs> I read on the internet you're 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 a junkie. <laughs> I mean, you said it. Was it wrong for me to blurt it out last night at dinner? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Was it wrong for me to blurt that out uh, in front of Jerry Bruckheimer? <laughs> Jerry's a friend. <laughs> I played in the hockey league with him. <laughs> I had him rolling. <laughs> I did my impression of Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. And then when we broke in the middle of the show, he, and you went to go to the bathroom, he goes, I don't sound like an asshole, do I? And then he called me every and day. And you went like, yeah, you don't sound like an asshole, and Artie's going to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't sound like an asshole, and Artie's in there going to the bathroom. <laughs> For four hours. Uh. Quite frankly, Art, I don't want to say this, but last year I fucked Solange. <laughs> Should I say it? He followed. He tried to find where she was. Of course. <laughs> Is she goth? <laughs> you mentioned brown eyes. Does she watch Buffy the Dickhead Slayer? <laughs> what show was he on? Uh, was it Teen Wolf or was something? It, you know what it was. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, Dan watches. <laughs> yeah, I gotta take a piss. You are very, very hostile. I thought I did them all last night. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Am I the one who's annoying? <laughs> I mean, that's a rhetorical question. I, 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 I just don't get it. He told me he wasn't dating her. He said that. And, you know, she's 14. Oh, God. Do I ID them? I mean, do I, what do I ask for, blood and urine? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't do puns. <laughs> I, I don't do puns. That's the thing. I'm up, do, I, do I feel I'm above you intellectually? <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm a bit of a storyteller. I, you know, it, it's observational. <laughs> Seinfeld called me personally. He said, your last special, man, that's the way to do it. It was fantastic. I'm like, could it hurt? Could it kill you to say it publicly? <laughs> publicly, he busts my balls. And I'm like, well, no, you, I tee him up and he gives me shit. I mean, could, could it kill you to do it on the set? <laughs> Within a year's distance of a major producer, <laughs> our, our casting director. Look, look, look that's a, that's a major casting director. I think that's Francine Maisler. <laughs> look, look, I mean, look, wait, Jerry, it's Francine Maisler. <laughs> Who? Oh, it must be great to be at the top. Major casting director at Columbia. <laughs> Not the country, the, the, the studio. <laughs> You're fucking with me now. <laughs> Who doesn't know Francine Maisler? <laughs> she casts everything. At Columbia. <laughs> uh, Francine, this is Jerry. <laughs> hey, hey, Jerry, just, uh, you know, I'm trying to be casual here, just making conversation. Did you see my special? <laughs> what do you mean, no? <laughs> Did you saw it, you told me you liked it. <laughs> what do you mean you had somebody watch it? <laughs> This is terrible. <laughs> this is backfiring. Francine, where are you going? <laughs> I, I swear, can I play the answering machine message? <laughs> he made me erase it. I'm a good guy. I, I, I erased it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What was that? I mean, I can't. It was Francine Maisler. Hey, wait, is that Bonnie Timmerman? <laughs> it's Bonnie Timmerman. Come over here. We'll try it again. Uh, give me two more seconds. <laughs> Tell her about the bus thing. <laughs> the bus thing. She's a humanitarian. <laughs> Bonnie. Hey. Remember I said, good job on Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Remember I said that to you? Remember I told you you cast the, 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 the movie? Well, most of them were offers, right? I, I, I didn't mean to say that in front of people. <laughs> hey, hey, Jerry. Uh, do you know Jerry Seinfeld? He's right. Where'd he go? Jerry, where'd he go? <laughs> Bonnie, did you see Jerry Seinfeld? He got on a private jet right behind me. 
I mean, he actually made the jet land behind me. <laughs> And never said something nice publicly. He was, I swear, Art, he was gushing the night before. He said, wow, I saw your show. Unbelievable show. Uh, you know, just, just into, the, into the night. And then here comes Mr. Big Shot with the scooter. <laughs> Francine Mays, Bonnie Timmerman was right there. And Jerry can't throw me a bone. When you prick me, do I not bleed? <laughs> I, I, I'm the teenage wolf. <laughs> I'm Teen Wolf. I'm like Michael. I'm, I'm getting all the pussy. What's his name? Would have got if you didn't get Parkinson's. <laughs> oh, yeah, fuck. Yeah, Michael J. He got Park. Is that not a known subject? <laughs> Who, why, why am I getting looks? From Bonnie Timmerman. Bonnie's son has Parkinson's. Oh, my God. Who knew that? You could wave me. <laughs> You're telling me I just told a major casting director I made a joke about Parkinson's and her kid has Parkinson's? <laughs> I might not even get in Teen Wolf 2 as myself. <laughs> Francine Mason. Real names, by the way. <laughs> Bonnie Turman uh, was a fan of mine. Got me, uh, got me into two movies that I got cut out of. <laughs> Father's Day and Jerry McGuire. She got me both. Uh, nice sweet girl. Sweet girl. Woman. She cast the Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. I always said to myself, what did she cast? I mean, were those all offers? Huge name in. I know, I was saying, but casting director, her job is to find unknowns, you know. There's none of it. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I got a bunch of great choices. I scoured all the obscure theaters around the country. I've got some great choices. I uh, know, that's Kevin Spacey. Okay. <laughs> what about for, that's going to be Jack Lemmon. Oh, uh, well, what about Alec Baldwin's agreed to do that? <laughs> really? Well, it, well, Alan Arkin, <laughs> Wow. And two words, Ed Harris. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what about the cop? Uh, that's kind of the director's uh, son. <laughs> he acts. We've, we've cut it down to one line. We can get you the bartender at the Chinese restaurant. That's probably it. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't say anything. He sort of does. <laughs> what about the guy who... Uh, who uh, the, you know what? Uh, Al Pacino. Wow. Al Pacino. Wow. So I'm out. Uh, I'm out. <laughs> Francine Mason. I met her too. Very nice. Who knows? I guess you know. You do, you do what you think you got to do. You do what you think you got to do. But uh, I love that uh, Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. I love it. Love it. I complimented Bonnie on it. I said, "Are you well, are you done complimenting her? <laughs> Can I have her ear for a bit?" <laughs> Can I give her my sizzle reel? <laughs> Bonnie, I know you're older. Do you have anyone who knows technology? <laughs> oh, God. Bonnie, I know. Yeah. It says on your Wikipedia you were born in 1911. <laughs> Quite frankly, I'm going to push back on that rhetoric. I've gotten political. <laughs> Is that so wrong? Yeah, the, the, the biggest booker for the north uh, east of Canada <laughs> is here. Yeah, I'm playing Halifax. <laughs> So I know I know how to pack well. <laughs> Artie, you're just you're always disheveled. Yet you get deals. I I, don't, I mean I gotta admit there's a little resentment I have. And have you ever sent a bus for an open wagon? You haven't either. I well I'm thinking about it. Get out of my ass. Anyway, we all got to know Artie Adams a little better. On our last trip to Montreal. Two weeks I was up there. Fantastic. Two weeks I was up there. <laughs> what you're about to hear is Kit Kat. <laughs> oh. I have. It's they're not new, but. Dan, you have to take a picture. Kit Kat and a cigarette. I didn't realize I'm doing this. <laughs> I didn't realize how unhealthy I look. I literally did not do this on purpose. Oh, yeah. Get a close-up. Sorry. I'm just saying, I, re <laughs> I, have, a, I have a cigarette and a Kit Kat. Yeah, okay. <laughs> At least oh. you're drinking water. Yeah. <laughs> There's normally a Hawaiian punch or a Coke there. Calm down. <laughs> what the hell? Did I kill my mother? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, 
So, so you know, we'll do, we never, I never do this. You know, I'll take a page out of Howard's book for self promotion. We got a major tour coming up. On a personal note, Dan, I'm sorry. I gotta, I gotta say, you know, I'm, I'm I gotta you know, promote myself a little. I apologize. <laughs> Dan is so jealous right now. I told you, I'm gonna book an event. Maybe a screening. <laughs> I'm gonna sing "Wind Beneath My Wings." You. <laughs> And I might talk it as a questionnaire. <laughs> Damn. Is it cold in my shadow? <laughs> um, to always be the second fiddle? <laughs> what, a, what an asshole song that is. <laughs> Think of the lyrics of that song. What an asshole song that is. <laughs> it must have been cold. <laughs> When I was the one with all the talent. How <laughs> go? It's at the end of Beaches. <laughs> yes, I know. You like Barbara Hershey. <laughs> now. A young Barbara Hershey. A boxcar birth of Barbara Hershey. Man. <laughs> we saw her recently. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. She looked like she's from Hershey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... She was a classy broad. I got Hannah's her sisters. Very natural beauty. Yeah. And then she got, the, I think, that lip thing and some... What? The lip... Did I hear it? The blow up the lips. Absolutely. Botox. Yeah. Blowtox. <laughs> That's what I call it. Blowtox. <laughs> Michael Caine's probably like, what did I see in her? <laughs> Yeah. What is it about uh, bad luck for all those sisters in that movie? Oof. She looks like she got hit by a Hershey truck. <laughs> uh, Diane Weiss is 400 pounds. Yeah. And uh, Mia Farrow uh, had a daughter married. <laughs> Mia Farrow's husband married her daughter. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> she went off the deep end, too. <laughs> Mia Farrell lost him, man. Hell, I don't know if we were like a woman scorned. She was trying to get him <laughs> indicted on child molesting, man. <laughs> You think Woody uh, uh, fucked uh, an underage kid? <laughs> but with that, I mean, seriously, the accusations were terrible. Like, yes. And that he touched the young one, like, inappropriately and, uh, you know. Well, he touched the old one inappropriately. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those press conferences. And right in the middle of all that shit, the movie he's making is Manhattan Murder Mystery. He had to be like a, he had to be like a, like a lovable, bubbly... He's a monster. <laughs> Put all that behind him and just goes, what? What are we doing? <laughs> Call, Diane Keaton. Oh, Mia Farrow was like a speed bump. <laughs> Diane Keaton went back to those movies in four seconds. Yep. What happened to the Yaya sisterhood? <laughs> Diane Keaton's withering away on off doing shit movie after shit movie, about to pack them in, and then some great news comes about. <laughs> Soon Yi and Woody Allen are fucking. <laughs> the, uh, her agent probably called her in moral Hollywood, yeah. like we're saying. Her agent probably called her, great news, put on the E channel. <laughs> what? Put it on. Oh, my God. Guess who's perfect for the next script? All you got to say is, that's not the Woody I know. Yeah. That's all you got to say. All you got to say is, yes. <laughs> what? What? Woody? I mean, <laughs> I never saw him have sex with his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I never saw him fuck a teen, uh, someone in high school when I was. Uh, yeah, hey, it, Diane, it's it's Woody. Have you been watching the uh, news? <laughs> yes, I have. Quite frankly, I have. Wait, 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 uh, where, are, where, where, where are you right now? Uh, I have the lead in the um, uh, Larry the Cable Guy movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know him. What what is he? Larry, uh, what do you play? Well, me and him play diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> we what? What, what? We dressed up like diarrhea. All right. Let's well, see if you can get out of it. Remember Manhattan? Yeah. <laughs> Add murder mystery to it. <laughs> Mia doesn't want to come back. The hell with her. She, 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 you know, she, can you believe how uptight she is? <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe how uptight she is? <laughs> I mean, look, it happens all the time. 
<laughs> this, this wealthy woman goes to uh, South America, uh, 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 goes to a third world country, <laughs> and picks a kid to save. A kid who definitely would have been looking at death, of malaria, death, rape, sickness, and she saves a little girl and brings that little girl to America. And not only shows that little girl love and affection and a nice life, shows her a privileged life on Fifth <laughs> Avenue. She had better t- Nick tickets than Tom Brokaw. Yeah. And she introduced her to her new, basically, Commonwealth husband, <laughs> a famous director, Woody Allen. Okay? Me. I meant me. I put the kid in a couple of movies when she's young. Not that cute yet. <laughs> and then the kid gets cute. And so big deal. This, girl, this, this little girl that she saves and becomes her daughter I fuck. What's up? <laughs> yeah, and she finds taking pictures of me fucking her, and then we, we I, I marry her daughter <laughs> that she saved. C- take the stick out of your ass. <laughs> what an awful human being. What I, I, I love Woody Allen. It's, it's tainted his his work for me. Yeah. And I'm a hypocrite. I still go see it. <laughs> Hollywood could care less. Hollywood, moral Hollywood. <laughs> We're going to take in refugees. We're good people. He only raped her. <laughs> they embrace Roman Polanski. Again, the way I argue it. Say out loud in plain English language, slowly, what Roman Polanski did. And then tell me if you want to be in the pianist. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, karma came back. Adrian Brody's career didn't exactly accelerate right. after the... Right now that Oscar is, is <laughs> <laughs> He has a card table It's a kitchen table The Oscar's making it even On one leg oh. You know he had to sell it He probably needed the money <laughs> Yeah It's next to Lawrence Taylor's Fucking ring <laughs> What would you buy Our Lawrence Taylor's ring or, or Bear's ring from 85 Or Brody's Oscar Oh Bear's ring from 85 I know okay. <laughs> I'm trying to list the things I would buy before Brody's uh, Oscar. <laughs> uh, probably uh, a cardboard cutout of Dabney Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> Partial list of my favorite things in life. <laughs> One of my favorite actors. Yeah, always amazing. <laughs> Partial list of my favorite things in life. Baseball. <laughs> documentaries. <laughs> Roots. The book. The like television horseshit. <laughs> My interview in Playboy magazine, <laughs> Mr. Martin Scorsese. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Cole plays a guy. It's otherwise a shit movie. But uh, Chevy Chase uh, did a movie around 1981 when he was just a big star. Doing hit after hit and funny movie after funny movie. And then, of course, came along Cops and the Robertsons. Yeah. No, but uh, it was called Modern, uh, Modern uh, Love. Modern, problems. Modern Problems. Good call. Name of the movie. Bit of an ensemble cast. <laughs> Dabney Coleman is in it. The movie's horse shit. Except for a couple funny things uh, uh, Chevy Chase does. Uh, I believe it was a... Uh, what's that girl's name who, who was a friend of Belushi? I don't remember her name. Kathy Evelyn Smith? Yeah. Little, 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 no, not her. Yeah. little edgy, though. And uh, Dabney Coleman's in it. And he plays a son, uh, like a rich guy who's... Uh, you know, he plays what he plays. An asshole. Right. It's great. Uh, he's the boss in the movie Nine to Five, if, I guess, uh, if anybody still knows that. Great, great actor. So he starts, he's walking on the beach in his robe, a real pompous asshole, and he starts listing his favorite things in life. Partial list. <laughs> Partial list of my favorite things in life. Documentaries. <laughs> my interview in Playboy magazine. <laughs> Mr. Martin Scorsese. <laughs> <laughs> Roots. Roots, 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 the book, and that television horseshit. <laughs> Mr. Mons. <laughs> yeah. How about this? Here's trivia, buddy. Name five of the things, name three things from Woody Allen's reasons uh, what makes life worth living at the end of Manhattan. Oh, man. Okay, Louis Armstrong. Sweet. No, 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 okay, no, what is it? What? What? Louis Armstrong's recording of oh, what? Uh, sweet, is sweet potato. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? Louis Armstrong's recording of. You're, you're in the right track. Sweet potato blues. You know, yeah, yeah, I give some it. Potato head blues. Potato blues, okay. okay. <laughs> That's one. Then, um. Wait, well, let me explain this for younger people. Okay. Uh, Dan and I are doing something that a lot of people can't do anymore. We're having obscure Woody Allen trivia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, okay, movie called Manhattan. 
It's his movie after Annie Hall. Which I hope you know Annie Hall. If you don't, <laughs> if you don't know Annie Hall, turn on another podcast. S and Yee. Yeah. What? S and Yee at the Knicks game. Uh, yeah, right, right. Exactly. Because <laughs> exactly. she said, yeah. She, that's her favorite. Yeah. Uh, you know, well, actually, I'm working on a film, Tranny Hall, <laughs> with uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Oh. Uh, so, uh, no, okay. Uh, Annie Hall was 77 In 79 he follows up Annie Hall Which he won Best Oscar for And it's known as the movie That transitioned him Into adult type films Not all come by Whatever uh, And uh, 79 though Is the movie In 1979 Right after uh, Annie Hall Now in 1978 well, He was making a movie here It's unbelievable In 1978 What film does he make? I'll give you a hint He's not in it And it's Maybe the darkest film He's ever made It's the in between Man- Interiors? Ma- yes 77 is Annie Hall, 78 is Interiors, and it is a, Diane Keaton, of course, is in it, uh, she gave good head, <laughs> oh, God. and uh, it's, a, it's a dark, dark film. Is that the one where they're out in Nantucket, yeah, and yeah. she walks That's into the I believe it's Geraldine Page, right. maybe, and uh, uh, no, 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 it's a great, great actor. E.G. Marshall. Yeah, he's in it. He's in it. Yeah. And, and it's very dark, and it's about broads. He writes about broads. <laughs> anyway, very in touch with the woman. Okay, 79 is the movie after that. Manhattan. Manhattan's in black and white, and it's his. It's basically Woody Allen's, uh, you know, uh, love story, love card, his his romantic, just like, I love you, to Manhattan, and uh, it's it's brilliantly shot. Again, the opening is uh, Gershwin's uh, song Rhapsody in Blue. You know, and uh, he's uh, play, the, the beginning. It's brilliant the way he does the narration in the beginning because it's him trying to write a book, and he's starting off. What am I going to say in the beginning? Uh, a conundrum I've had several times, <laughs> and he's like, you know, New York, and he keeps going. Wait a minute, too, too, too liberal, too. <laughs> I want to sell some books here, <laughs> and uh, that's how you get into it. And I love it. To Gershwin's uh, Rhapsody of R- Blue. Rhapsody Blue. Yep, that's what I just said. I just said you don't listen to me. I said that you're not listening to anything I'm saying <laughs> yeah, like, because you're trying to think of something that tops me all the time. It's like you're, you're preoccupied. You don't laugh at anything because you're. Going, I'm trying to think of something funnier. That's not your job right now. Your job is just admit that I'm better in every way. <laughs> okay, the, uh, I remember. Wait a minute! Thing. I'm okay. explaining what we're doing. Okay. You, you listen to anything? <laughs> uh, not everybody knows what we're doing, <laughs> and I, that's my fault. But I asked you a question, and blah blah blah. Don't Google this shit. I I was uh, holding my hands up so you could right, see. Okay, your cock. <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay. Who you, Eric Garner? Come down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I look at you, you know, I can't breathe. Okay. <laughs> yes, you can. You got, you're selling loose cigarettes? I could use those. <laughs> yeah. Make yourself useful. Uh, so at the end of Manhattan, it's a love story, and it's, uh, you know, ironically enough, it's about him falling in love with a 17-year-old. At the time, he's about 44 years old. 43, 40, imagine he was 43, 44 around that time. I got him by five years. Oh, Jesus Christ. I've done nothing. And uh, he, uh, he, he falls in love with uh, Mariel Hemingway, uh, a, de- a descendant of uh, uh, Ernest Hemingway, the author. I used to do a joke. Uh, I said, um, I went back in time. I was hanging out with Ernest Hemingway, and he was asking me a bunch of personal questions. I said, what, are you writing a book? <laughs> uh, yeah, he'd say, if, uh, if the audience really you, there. As smart as you. <laughs> that and the, it took my cab driver three hours to make a K-turn in Japan. <laughs> uh, you know, this is good shit. Uh, so uh, <laughs> at the end, he, he falls in love with Diane Keaton, and then he goes back to, to he falls back in love with Marilyn Hemingway, and she represents. And I've fallen in love with women like this, where they just represent. You know, maybe they don't stimulate you intellectually, and they, but you know, they they, they 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 just have this beauty about them, and and you say when you look at their face, everything's okay in the world. They don't have to be this big intellectual. They don't have to get every joke. They don't have to be. They just want to live life and be happy. And what's wrong with that? <laughs> you know, she just had they, they have beautiful Did eyes. Did the mic go out there? No, uh, they have beautiful <laughs> eyes, and they don't have to be Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to get every bit. They don't. <laughs> they don't have to get every bit. <laughs> they don't have to get the Todd Bridges joke. <laughs> I don't have to ask who David Letterman is while she's on the show, David Letterman. Maybe they're just beautiful and sweet. 
and that's all you need. <laughs> Maybe they're just beautiful <laughs> and sweet and want you to pay for medical school. <laughs> Maybe they're just beautiful and sweet <laughs> and have a $40,000 ring right now, <laughs> even though you haven't seen them in years. <laughs> and some, some you have a fling with and are beautiful and they do get the jokes <laughs> and they're a little more stimulated mentally and good conversation with a gorgeous, sexy girl. And maybe they marry a cop. <laughs> maybe they get married and then friend Dan. <laughs> Five days later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and maybe when the beautiful one who represented the beauty with, you know, out, was without the great conversation sometimes, maybe when she's very mad at you. <laughs> You go to the stimulating conversation one <laughs> on West 71st Street <laughs> in a loft. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes even when you're still with <laughs> the other girl who will call your girlfriend for the purposes of this conversation, you, uh, you happen to see the stimulating girl <laughs> because you want a steak. <laughs> Man, uh, I don't know. I'm not gonna explain why you I might share <laughs> what I want to steak. Uh, if I want a steak and I want to be attached to my old job, <laughs> physically, yeah. You know, uh, you go back and uh, one of them may give the best blowjob you've ever had. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> and let's just say one of them is with that same mouth as kissing a retired police woman. <laughs> and uh, he's wondering if she ever dated a comedian because <laughs> when he kisses her, it tastes funny. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Maybe one finds God. <laughs> Maybe one from years back, adorable, stimulating, uh, work with let's just say she worked with people who needed sneakers <laughs> maybe she has a child who's half African American <laughs> so is Barack Obama and Derek Jeter <laughs> and I'll drop a mic on that <laughs> okay, I'll drop a mic maybe another one gets an abortion without telling you oh. on Zuma Beach <laughs> and tells you you're out of control <laughs> and you scream at her what makes you say that <laughs> and you realize you have an eight ball of blow in your pocket. Oh, God. And a half empty bottle of Jack Daniels in your car, <laughs> right behind her at Zuma Beach. <laughs> While you're wearing a shirt that says, Hey, bitch, show me your scuss. <laughs> that was in a sketch that you just wrote for uh, what we'll call a sketch comedy show you're on. <laughs> Maybe that girl moves back to the mythological city that she lives <laughs> in. Uh, we'll, call it, uh, we'll call it, just for sake of argument, San Diego. <laughs> and you never see her again. Until about three years ago, when she calls you, because she's doing her eighth step in AA and she wants to apologize to people. <laughs> oh, God. Says, sorry for the abortion. And I get horny again. And she sends me a picture of her. <laughs> let's just say she puts on, let's just say she puts on the, uh, the sophomore 80. <laughs> oh, God. You get horny or you get orny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I get horny. I get ornery. <laughs> Ornery Adams. <laughs> That's what he should be called. I'm Ornery Adam. This is the character Ornery. I'm Ornery. I'm Ornery Adam. <clears throat> I'm, I'm just a little perturbed. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe another one. <laughs> I'm kidding. Maybe you rob a bank with another one. Uh, you know, nobody listens to the podcast. Maybe another one uh, walks yeah. home over the George Washington Bridge one night <laughs> and wants you to think she possibly died. <laughs> then when you get home, she jumps out of the enclosure <laughs> with nothing uh, between her and the Almighty but my hands. Oh, God. And, uh, you know, because she's so sweet, says her plan is to, to jump off, die, and have the cops think you pushed her and I rot in jail. <laughs> this is getting a little too specific. <laughs> What I'm saying is I've had some turbulent, turbulent relationships. Dan and I have had some falling outs. Yeah. That's right. 
But I love the kid. <laughs> uh, Dan's threatening to leave. He's threatening to walk out that door. <laughs> but I start thinking about that midnight train to Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> he leaving. <laughs> I said something I should have. <laughs> anyway. All right. So I digress. Woody Allen has this, you know, that that is, Mar- Meryl Hemingway in this movie represents that thing of like just, d- 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 you know, and I, 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 I spoke about, I, the, everything I mentioned there, all those girls, about four or five girls, I'm 49, uh, three of which I live with in this apartment. Oh, there was the other one. <laughs> oh, God. Her. Maybe one's in Miami. <laughs> Maybe one's in Miami. Treat me wrong. <laughs> Uh, one night hangs a curve over the plate. Ladies and gentlemen, he turned on it. <laughs> and a happy Bucky Dan. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'll say. Bill White announced it that night. <laughs> Leave 11, all wrong. <laughs> Your strips will not get home run. <laughs> oh, and then there's another girl. Yeah. Say she uh, has your number. And while you're with the one girl that you're in love with from Miami, leaves you a voicemail <laughs> at 4.30 in the morning that we all hear that goes something like this. Hey Artie, I'm with Kid Rock. Hey Artie, I just fucked Kid Rock and he says he knows you. Can I come over? <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm, I'm, I'm verbatim. I'm, I'm I'm canoodling in the couch. This couch I'm on right now, canoodling with this girl from Miami. I just fell fucking love with her, and uh, just trying to get with her. You know, trying to get with her. That's the black side. <laughs> and uh, she might have been with some blacks. I don't know. Uh, tough act to follow. But, you know, we're, we're hugging, and, you know, she, she just wouldn't let me go. You know, I guess she liked good bone structure. Yeah. But I'm a gentleman who take, took a lot of cold showers. <laughs> and uh, I hurt my dick jerking off to that broom. And I, uh, I, I, as I put in a poem for her, <laughs> and, and I'm uh, hugging with her, trying to be nice and romantic. And that, another girl who was not, you know, marrying kind. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, God, what a sweetheart in many ways. Uh, the girl who shot me up, yeah, whatever. Uh, nice girl. The girl who's girl. Oh, oh, I the kids. I said whatever. Okay, I'm just trying to be romantic with this girl, and on my voicemail at five in the morning, on like a Thursday, <laughs> the the other girl was, was she was a stripper. The, the other girl I had on the side there. She she would come over sometimes when we call the booty call in the business, <laughs> and she goes verbatim into the voicemail, screaming two feet from me and the other girl. Hey, Artie, I just fucked Kid Rock, and he says he knows you. Can I come over? God. I just fucked Kid Rock. Uh, I did know Kid Rock from CERN. I met him, right. a, couple, I met him a couple of times. High five him about Pam Anderson. And then boiled my hands because of Hep C. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, you know, so anyway, so what do you, that, that thing of like, uh, they say, uh, I had that with, I would say, I had that with Adrian. Adrian was, she was so angelic. Oh, I love that. So beautiful. And uh, when I looked at her, everything was fine in the world. Everything. There wasn't any uh, anything wrong. You like, you like she 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 just was like everything's gonna be all right. You know, there's no bills to pay. There's no deadlines to meet. There's no planes to catch. We'll get there. We'll get there. Do you understand? And I would always say, "You're right. You're right." And then we'd miss the plane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But it was fine. And uh, with the exception of a new girl I met. I think I might be. I told her that I might be in love. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, uh, I think I got hit with your. I, the, the, I was telling uh, John Melendez, uh, oh, did you get hit with Cupid's arrow? I said, John, you got hit with Stupid's arrow. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I think a couple times that's a thing. <laughs> Girls are beautiful, but you got hit with Stupid's arrow. <laughs> Cupid hits you in the heart, Stupid hits you in the brain. <laughs> <laughs> See a big Cupid out of my heart, a big stupid, <laughs> stupid out of a dunce at me. <laughs> stupid, stupid's a clue. <laughs> Cupid's out of my heart, stupid's out of my heart. Isn't my brain? <laughs> That's fucking great. Oh, Albert Brooks had to think of that. What does that mean? No. You know what I realized? Albert Brooks and Orny Adams are just a little light. Yes, yes. Wow, we got to tell Albert Brooks that. I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. What does that mean? Who? Who? <laughs> uh, picture, picture if uh, real life was uh, Teen Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, at the end of the movie, he realizes he wants to, he falls back in love with her. And, he's, and the reason that he, he runs back to her, and the way he gets into that is he's laying in bed. And he does something that's a cool little exercise to do. He's like, th- and he's depressed. And he go into a microphone. He go, he's working on like a new book. And into a microphone, he goes, things that make life worth living. A reason to live. 
a reason not to blow your fucking head off. And he makes a list. And it's it's a lot of cool shit on there. I just, Dan being a big Woody Allen fan, I just asked him to name at least. Let's make it five now. Uh, I, I can't. I'm not gonna be able to. Uh, I know one of them. Okay, I asked Dan the list. I, I think you. Let's let's think how many lists. Okay. Uh, right. Because I can't ask you to do this now. You know what? I'll Google it because I know almost the whole list. I want to see how many items it one is. One of them is a ch- uh, Chinese restaurant. It's uh, the the. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait. Wait. The, okay. I asked. Okay. Basically, I asked Dan to name three. I think it's about nine or ten. He rattles off before he goes. So I'm asking Dan to name them. That's what it is. He got one of the harder ones because you think it, there are names. He just says names. Right. But with, but with Louis Armstrong, you think he'd just be caught. It's Louis Armstrong's recording of Potato yeah, Head Blues. Blues. Okay, so that's the one he got. A difficult one. Uh, there's about eight, I guess. So go ahead. I asked him to name three. Go ahead. Okay, one is but Sam Blues. Lowe's. Sam, the name of the uh, Chinese You're going to have to get it exactly. I'm not uh, going to be able to get it. And there's something at Sam. The Blue. Not the pot stickers, not the wontons. The pot stickers? The dumplings, the dumplings. We're not at some shithead Chicago <laughs> bar. New York we're talking about. Yeah. The dumplings? Is it the dumplings? No. The... Crab, soft shell crab. Is it soft shell crab? Soft shell crab at. S- I'll, I'll give it to you. The crabs at Sam Woes. Sam Woes. Okay. There's- I don't know why I'm giving it to you, but I'll give it to you. The crab. So you got potato blues and the crabs at Sam Woes. Okay. The uh, another one is an artist. It's a painting. It's. Uh, I, I, you know what? We're gonna waste people. I'm not gonna be able to get them. I'm, Those uh, apples and pears by Cezanne. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I know it, baby. Lang, Mr. Schlump. <laughs> By the way, I was in two feet of those apples and pears. They went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. My buddy was in college, and he had to do a thing at the Met. He goes, come with me. And I, don't, I go, you know, hang on. And by the way, I, there was a local hardware store that had a slogan. We ain't just paint. Do you ever hear that? We ain't just paint? No. It was a local store. And they had a big sculpture there. And I started screaming out, Metropolitan Museum of Art ain't just paint. Nobody cares. Uh, I almost got thrown out of the tour. But okay, apples and pears had just sold for $42 million. And it was there. There was a line. Dan, I'm telling you, again, a simpler time. Maybe this is 1986, something like that. I was a foot from it. And I got, nobody checked me for a magic marker. I could have just went, burnt black mark right down it. Right. I was right in front of it. 42 million. Cezanne's, Cezanne's those apples and pears by Cezanne. All right. So uh, you didn't get that. Okay. You got two. You got to get more than two. Come uh, on, bro. Yeah. He names people that are obvious. I know. Um, nothing. No recording. Nothing. It's it, it, he just names a name. Sidney Bechet is that one of them? Yes. Wait, wait. wait does he say Sidney Bechet? No. But there's three that he rattles off. They're just names of people he loves. Gershwin. Nope. Groucho well, Marx. Nope. The Marx Brothers. He definitely loves them, but as far you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look it up right after this. The maybe maybe I'm wrong about Does that. Does he see the Marx Brothers and then also someone else too? The Marx Brothers and the Marx Brothers and the Something Brothers. Let me start thinking. With the, 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 uh, uh, well, what's the last one? What's the very last thing he names? Not the clarinet. The very last thing he knows. I, I can't remember. Tracy's face. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hemingway's Tracy. character is Tracy. And right. he Tracy's face, and then he thinks about Tracy's face, and oh god, that gets to me. Anyway, uh, do you want me to rattle off the three people? He just rattles off yes, three names. Yes, yes. Oh, you're gonna kill yourself. Frank Sinatra, Marlon Brando, and Willie Mays. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, then he goes, Mr. Martin's goes, I don't know. The Crabs and Sam Woes, uh, Woody, uh, Louis Armstrong's recording of Potato Head Blues, Those Apples and Pears by Cezanne, Willie Mays, Marlon Brando. I think that's all of them. Look it up. Okay. Let's take a break. I'm going to take a break. We'll look it up and right. come back. How long have we been talking for? Over an hour. Okay. Let's take a break. We'll wrap it up after. We'll come back and let you know about the list okay. if you can. Uh, we're back. 
And uh, yeah, it turns out Dan was. We, we we heard the list. We found it on there. We're gonna play you the clip from the movie. We're gonna educate you bastards. Uh, this is the years before he married his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so Nineteen seventy nine. But he did hit up on Mariel Hemingway yeah, the she entire. Was, she was seventeen. She was pro- legal. Just legal, I guess. Uh, yeah, 17, 18. Was she, she, no, 17. She was 17. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because she just revealed that in her book last year. Her sister, uh, her sister Margot, got committed suicide. The three, Ernest Hemingway committed suicide. People don't know that. At 60 years old, he blew his fucking head off in Idaho. Uh, I guess uh, residuals from the sun also rises. <laughs> But uh, you, you want to see, you know, the, the real, like, uh, the romantic part of this country, uh, of, of the United States and the promise of maybe making it big and traveling and uh, yeah, the, the, the movable feast. It describes the years in Paris in the 20s, right after World War One. He stayed in, uh, he went and fought in World War One, and uh, uh, stayed in Paris for a few years. Uh, and uh, 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 F. Scott Fitzgerald and his wife, Zelda, Gertrude Stein, the famous art critic, and uh, Picasso, and, you know, their whole crowd. That's who was running in Paris in the 20s, in the early 20s, yeah. right, right after the war. <laughs> and uh, Movable Feast is about that. He describes that scene. And it's, you know, the reason uh, the movie Revolutionary Road, it, it, it created, Paris was always romantic, but that made it like, you know, these people all want to go to Paris. And uh, they have to figure out unique ways to do Paris. And, of course, I did. I got arrested. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, so uh, it, 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 uh, it, it was a big thing for Woody Allen to have Hemingway, Hemingway's grand, his granddaughter, in the film. And I think uh, he wanted to fuck her because of that. <laughs> I think he was fucking American literature <laughs> in some way. So, uh, again, at the end, he makes this list, and I, okay, Dan was right with Groucho Marx. I didn't think that was on the list. I thought Russian Tea Room might have been on when I started hearing it, but no. I miss stuff that, like, you know, okay, some the Jupiter Symphony, <laughs> yeah. something by Flaubert, uh, and Swedish movie. <laughs> Everything else I got, though. Yes. Everything else I was on, and uh, Dan was right about, but Dan had blues. I gave him that one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, not bad. I just have I, I'm, I'm very obsessive And I've got an excellent memory I'm trying to teach Dan memory tips <laughs> But uh, you heard what Dan guessed What I guessed Here's the actual clip Worth living That's a very good question um, Well There are certain things I, I guess that make it worthwhile Stop it for a second there. Uh, Boy, like, boy, doesn't he, when, when it's just the sound, doesn't he sound like a little pussy? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't he sound like a little, like, <laughs> like a mousy little, well, believe me, I you know, I love him. I love this movie, but what a mousy little weasel. <laughs> I don't know. I got to make a list. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Mia, your kid looks good. Who's that? Who's that? Is that? Is that the, yeah, Mia, who's the other uh, little girl? Mia, the one with the, uh, the big forehead. Yeah. The one with the big forehead? Yeah, the one who's the stupid. The kind of stupid. Yeah, I don't like it. 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 I do me a favor, man. Get to my chest. Let's make this my favorite thing. Are you okay? Here's the thing. Hey, Gordon. Are you the who said the title? Gordon Wilson. You said I'm sorry. I forgot your name. I forgot your name. Let me pick something. Yeah, I'm gonna let them listen to that. My kid looks like Frank Sinatra. My kid looks a little like Frank Sinatra. I'm just gonna put a big blue eye. You know, said to me a favor. Listen, the dying kid and me a favor. Louise Latham. Louise Latham. Mary Hartman. 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 I just don't do TV with the Gene Dominion. I didn't put it in the back. I didn't think it in the back. There was a spot on my shirt. I didn't put it in the back. I didn't put it in the back. I never thought I had an assistant. Let me tell you something. It was me. It was the Asian girl. Was the Asian girl. Who's the Asian kid you say? She's very sweet. Very sweet. I'm going to take a naked picture. I'm going to take a naked picture. I'm going to get Keith on the phone. 
I think you see a lot of fun to go to sleep. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to go listen to my favorite movie, The Life of the Living. At the end, I'm going to be sitting down. I want the lighting to be back over here. Like, I'm gonna Can you backlight it? Can you backlight it? It's going to back. I want to make a list of my favorite things in life. I'm going to grab the same ones. You ever have grab the same ones? Because I'm going to go to sleep. Don't break my glasses. Don't break my glasses. I wrote a lot of jokes with uh, uh, Mickey, uh, Mickey Stone. You know, Mickey Stone and Mickey Rose. Mickey Rose. And I went back and I went to high school and I you know, it's kind of erotic. But parents, my parents are going to sing a Venetian frog. I'm gonna come back and watch me. I'm gonna just play the clarinet. I'm gonna play the clarinet. I don't get it. I hate going to the Oscars. I don't go to the Oscars. Because the Oscars, you know, that's what it gets me. I gotta make small talk with people. I just don't like it. Sid Caesar was a wonderful guy. Sid, I think I'm gonna want to go with Dick Cavett. I'm gonna the mooth, uh, the mooth with the, uh, you know, the, the mooth mingled. The mooth mingled. And they went to the, and they got it. the joke was on them because it was restricted. <laughs> and the joke was on them because it was restricted. I got think within. I got I had an example of world contraception. And the, the, I asked a girl to make love me. She said no. And it was, it was, it was, and I, I, I failed my metaphysical uh, final at the NYU. I looked within the soul of the boy next to me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a lot of jokes and jokes. I'm gonna play Vegas. Play Vegas for <laughs> That's what he sounds like. <laughs> Never she. Yeah, you know. I, yeah. I think the same thing when I got some jokes in there. I got some jokes in there. Yeah, you know, I, 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 my sex life is terrible. Last time I was inside a woman's when I visited the Statue of Liberty. Uh, yeah, that was a good one. Was a good one. I, you know, I plagiarized most of my love letter. Uh, I plagiarized most of it from uh, James Joyce. I'm sure you're wondering about all the references to Dublin. That's a funny one. I like that one. The, I tried counterfeiting for a little while. and then I, 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 I got the plates all screwed up. And Lincoln came out smoking a cigarette. <laughs> and yeah, I, I robbed a butcher shop and I had 116 veal cutlets with it. I had to rob a tremendous amount of breading after that. <laughs> okay, we're going to eat the film. Uh, it'll be a face file. And my wife had coffee. These films could change your life. <laughs> okay. I, I, he just, oh my God, what a weasel. <laughs> I, I listen. I fucked your daughter. I fucked your daughter. You know our daughter. Basically, our daughter. I fucked. Her. Yeah, this naked picture. I got some Polaroids. Oh. And I was doing some tests for a movie. I'm gonna fuck her. I'm gonna, uh, it's called I fucked our daughter. The movie. Oh. <laughs> What's the name of the movie? I fucked our daughter. <laughs> I fucked the gookie thing. The name of the name of the, I slid the slope. Can you get Tony Roberts on the phone? <laughs> get Tony Roberts on the phone. Yeah, Alan Alder's gonna play. <laughs> Tell him Alan Alder's better in the <laughs> metaphysical. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Here's the list. What? <laughs> okay. Um, for me, uh, ooh, I would say what? Groucho Marx. To name one thing, uh, he is good. Um, and Willie Mays and over it. Um, the second movement of the Jupiter Symphony. All right, whatever. <laughs> and um, Louis Armstrong, recording of Potato Head got, Blues. Gotta get a black guy. In there. <laughs> um, Swedish movies, naturally. Fuck you. Sentimental Education by Flaubert. Whatever. Uh, Trying to get laid now. Marlon Brando, Frank Sinatra. Um, Two guys you hate. Who hated them? Yes. Incredible Apples and Pears by Cezanne. Yeah, I got them, buddy. Uh, the Crabs at Sam Woe's. The Crabs I got from Sam Woe. <laughs> uh, the Crab from some Tracy's hoe. Tracy's face. <laughs> Tracy's face. The Crabs I got from some hoe. All right. Well, I, I'm going to wrap up this one. We're going to do two today. A two podcast day. A uh, lot of things I'm dying to get to. You know, it proves that we have so much fun here talking. There are a lot of things I want to get to, I just can't get to. Uh,. One is Nancy Pelosi and how crazy she is. And uh, uh, the other one is, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I'd like to do some, at some point, do a show where we, we do self-promote my life here. I mean, a very big thing is coming up here. I'm, I'm a regular on, a, on an HBO series produced by Judd Apatow. <laughs> and I play Artie Lang. name of the pilot is Artie Lang. Again, I don't brag enough. I don't brag enough. You know, people who are in my life for the last few years, they don't know I play Carnegie Hall. Orny Adams, you know, you know, you know how fast Orny Adams would yell out from the mountaintops. We're hearing about spots he's doing in Korea. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a regular, I, and I'm going on stand up, a stand up tour with uh, Pete Holmes, a great guy, and really funny in this show. It's his show, and I, I, I you know, and John Apatow. The three of us are doing stand up. What did the paper? What did the AP say? Three comedic geniuses, or well, three modern uh, t uh, comedy greats. That's right. Uh, John Apatow, Pete Holmes, and the special guest they have coming. <laughs> oh, no. 
No, it does. Your it's, name it's, everything, it's flattering. <laughs> it's flattering. And we're doing San Francisco. We're doing uh, L.A. We're doing New York. We're doing Philly. I, you know, I, I again, go to Crashing. It's on Twitter. Uh, it's on Twitter, at right. Crashing. And it's uh, on Artie Lang. It's on Artie Quitter. ArtieQuitter.com. And, uh, you know, you'll see the trailer for the Crashing Tour, which is great, and the trailer for the Crashing the Show. And the show is, is going to be great. It's got a lot of great cameos in it. People like Sarah Silverman, and uh, the, you know, of course, uh, the, the, every uh, every uh, comic that is worth anything down at the Comedy Cellar, I believe. Dab Davidoff, Dab Davidoff, my friend. David Tell does a cameo in it. Uh, Dan Natterman, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people uh, who uh, uh, are involved with uh, Dave Juskow's program. <laughs> and Dave Juskow. Dave Juskow, of course, in it. But Sarah does a solid. And she's in one or two episodes. She, she does my. We do the podcast on episode seven, the second to last time. I mean, we do the podcast. Dan is in it. Dan <laughs> produces the show. He was told not to speak. Uh, Sarah's great in it. And uh, I think she might be in two episodes. The great T.J. Miller, who I got to, who I always liked. One of the few younger guys I really liked, and I got to work with him here in a couple of scenes, and I, uh, he's hilarious. Um, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's gonna, it's, it's, it's amazing. It starts February 19th, and I am going on a stand-up tour that I cannot wait to go on. Uh, and Dan will, uh, Dan will be there to tell everybody he's in the scene. With the <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking forward to that, guys. Thank you, thank you so much to John Apatow, man, and, uh, and and Pete Holmes, and, and everybody at HBO. It is the absolute absolute opportunity of a lifetime again i i say it half joking but comedy lottery it, it's not uh, it's not an exaggeration judd hbo <laughs> and a, a you know up and coming guy like pete who's a real nice guy and a perfect contrast for what i do it just we look like we're in different species and of <laughs> course that is a compliment to him and uh stand up special that he has out right now is great and uh it's a perfect thing to uh, lead into this show Judd, of course, produced the hit girls over there, and uh, that's going away, which means hopefully we'll get picked up, and again, uh, the smoke clears, and I'm somehow on a Judd Apatow-produced HBO show, um, so uh, I'm thrilled, and my performances, uh, they say it's good. I, uh, <laughs> I I could tell it went okay. I never, uh, well, it's like Brando. I, <laughs> In this case, it's like Brandon in the sense that I would go to the set every day and I asked, I asked him if they could put an ice box in there. <laughs> and he was a young kid. He said, you mean refrigerator? I said, well, don't be a wise ass. <laughs> I said, put an ice box in my... Yeah. And just stack up my favorite things. Like, and, and he, he, I guess he Googled me because it was stacked with my favorite. I walked in there. It was like uh, like uh, ice cream and cheese. Uh, like ice cream and cheese and Russian dressing and cheese. And there was uh, cheese with cheese. Uh, there was John Cleese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's that's what was you know that's what I'm saying, and I, I actually I pitched a show that I'm gonna I think it would be great if uh, John Hamm and John Cleese did a show called Hamm and Cleese. <laughs> it's, uh, John Hamm and John Cleese, and you're gonna think, what are you calling this show, John and John? No, that's the obvious, Hamm and Cleese, <laughs> and of course John Hamm is the Ham. He's the ham, and John Cleese would be cheesy, <laughs> as car ironically, as this is a John a Ham and Cleese, <laughs> and I think I'm going to do it at the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> <laughs> they have a theater at the Mayo Clinic because Ham and Cleese would need some of the Mayo. <laughs> Not, I'm, I'm getting silly now. I'd like to put an ice bucket on my head. Is Fruza bulk around? <laughs> <laughs> Ham and Cleese. <laughs> Is Ham and Cleese here? <laughs> yeah. That's what I like to see, Ham and Cleese. <laughs> I'm not sure what the show's going to be. Yet. <laughs> It'll be about one guy who's going to play a, 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 a guy who gets uh, one lucky break and is kind of overrated and does shitty commercials. <laughs> and the other guy's going to be a comedic genius. So <laughs> I'm not sure who's who yet. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be, uh, yeah, a little uh, uh, fish called Wanda. <laughs> Fierce creatures. Hammond, please. <laughs> uh, that's Brando. 
I'm going to end with this. I'm going to get this out of the way. I'm going to try to, and I, it's, I don't know how long it'll be. If it becomes a big bit, we'll do it another night. But uh, I want to do a couple of these. I'm dying to do them on the air. We thought of, uh, you know, Pat Summerall used to give out the, um, the lineup for Sunday night when he did Sunday night football games with John Matt. And he sounded like he was annoyed with the lineup back then. Like, that night on CBS, <laughs> murder, she wrote, followed by the Jeffersons, Alice, 60 minutes, followed by Alice, <laughs> <laughs> the Jeffersons, and the CBS Sunday night movie, <laughs> A Child's Rage, the Jessica Connors story, starring Meredith Baxter Burney. <laughs> Tonight on Fox, House of Buggin', <laughs> with comedian John Leguizamo. <laughs> that was a real thing. <laughs> they moved to Fox, the NFC moved to Fox, so some were all in Madden then. The Turducken and the Booze moved yes. over there. And, uh,. Yeah, he had to do Fox's hip <laughs> hip lineup, which at the time Lake was on had a house of boo. Then I <laughs> on Fox House of Buggin, starring comedian John Leguizamo. The Simpsons were on there too. The Simpsons. <laughs> and on on House of Buggin tonight, the guys are chilling <laughs> with a couple of forties. <laughs> Tonight they're spilling some gin and juice for a fallen brother of the Crips. <laughs> and the bloods are bringing in the crack <laughs> and the cocaine. <laughs> Apparently a car gets stolen. <laughs> and oh my, the lowriders come out on Crenshaw. <laughs> Second and five, the Giants have it. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're getting a little bit into what I'm talking about here. If he were announcer now, and something like 600 pound <laughs> and he gives that a, and then what's the episode's about uh, <laughs> alright that'll stop it there third and eight they might be in field goal distance while uh, John uses the bathroom again I smell turducken I'm gonna give TLC's Sunday night lineup tonight <laughs> Tiaras and toddlers. <laughs> Apparently, a uh, woman dresses up a three year old like a broad. <laughs> and you want to fuck her face. Oh. Tiaras and toddlers. <laughs> Followed by that loud blonde broad. Uh, whatever. <laughs> and then the new hit, My 600 Pound Life. Tonight. Kirsten can't wash the folds in her ass. She gets soap in her eyes in the shower where she's stuck. She starts yelling out, Mom, Mom, the bench. I can't see the bench. Move the bench. The mom moves the bench. 612 pound Kirsten sits down on the bench. She doesn't know the father of her half Puerto Rican daughter, Perez. She changes her last name to Perez in tonight's episode. On the next 600 pound life, Lupe tries to eat her husband, Gilbert. Gilbert says he can't take much more of this. As Lupe holds up her stomach, Gilbert has to wipe her Mexican ass. On tonight's 600-pound life, Lupe hides a burrito in her purse. Tonight... On 600 pound life, Lupe gets a super burrito from her niece, who in this broadcaster's opinion could use to, could drop a few herself. She's heading down that Lupe road. On tonight's 600 pound life, Lupe takes her blood sugar, and it's just below Babe Ruth's lifetime slugging percentage. Gilbert says, wow, that's high. And she says, fuck you, get me a super burrito. <laughs> uh, tonight, six, <laughs> uh, tonight six, Gilbert threatens to leave again. <laughs> Dr. Noatson watches as Lupe gets stuck in the toilet. Ugh. The toilet top gets stuck to her ass, her flat brown ass. <laughs> Dr. Noatson says... This is very disheartening to witness. <laughs> then he cashes a $900,000 check from the insurance company. <laughs> Dr. Noatson claims tonight 
that Kirsten can't take any discomfort. She's 600 pounds. She's in a fishing net. <laughs> and something's up her nose. No air conditioning. And they're in Houston. <laughs> Yet he says she can't take a little discomfort. <laughs> He's an old school bastard. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> On tonight's 600-pound life, we'll talk to Gideon. <laughs> Gideon tries to eat his Fermunda cheese. <laughs> On 600-pound life. Gideon has a tumor hanging between his legs <laughs> that looks like one of the pods in that Hugh Jackman vampire movie <laughs> where the children nest. <laughs> that's in between the legs of a man in Houston. <laughs> And tonight, Gideon eats their po Gideon eats the family poodle <laughs> again. <laughs> and tonight's six hundred pound life. All right, third and eight. <laughs> okay, we could do. That. Oh, I'm gonna keep doing that. That's a new character. <laughs> Pat Summerall doing TLC's lineup. <laughs> Tiara's and toddlers. Tiara.